Right, this is the making of Horror Mail Part 2. This isn't a promotion for a film because there isn't a film yet. Horror Mail does not exist. This is the making of Horror Mail. I'll tell you a little bit where I've got to now. Where I've got to now is all of the stories for Horror Mail have been written, they've all been edited. Uh, and there's a frame that goes around it because Horror Mail is going to be an anthology film, okay? Or as much as I can with one person. So it's going to be an anthology film. So there's a framing ID which goes around it. Uh, and that is what holds all the different stories together, basically, yeah? What I've also done is the basic uh, links and framing IDs aren't just going to be uh, mindless links. I decided, well, fairly early on I needed more than that. I didn't just want them to be, you know, you get anthology films where the links are just sort of there, you know? Where they hold it together and they're nothing more than that. Well, they're not just links to hold things together in the frame the idea, except the bits are there and the frame of the, of the thing is basically what, the, what I'm talking about and the stories will be there. That sort of visual way of representing it. Uh, it's more than that, they have to be interesting on their own. So I do have a plan for the different uh, links between the films. Because obviously, uh, although the whole idea, horror mail, it's basically about a letter to the post. Yeah. Uh, and that's the idea itself. There will be things between the different stories, and these have to be interesting. Uh, so I've decided to make these. They should be so interesting that you could take them, take them out, and put them on their own, and they would stand up. Okay, that's how interesting I want them to be. And so I do have some props, not a lot, but so. Uh, but don't expect these to be sold because so far these are my. This is my stuff. Okay. There won't be many props, it's not going to be like a lot of stuff like that. Although there will be letters and things like this that will be used in it. Uh, whether people will want to buy these when the film is complete, I don't know. But could could happen, you know. Uh, but also, uh, you know, the look of it has to be thought through now. I've already thought about this to some extent, but the look of it and how I go about it from there. There's still things to do, okay. But this does help show how I have moved forward. I don't know if it looks how I've moved forward very much. Uh, it looks like I've moved forward very much to other people. Okay. Because I'm just sort of talking here. But I've actually moved quite a lot. Now this is still the pre-film part, okay. I haven't filmed anything yet. Uh, but to be honest, it's sort of easier to plan it out properly first and then film it and then do it from there rather than hope that it works and film a lot of stuff. I mean, people do do that in experimental films. They just film a load of stuff and then they don't know what it's going to be about until the end. But this isn't really going to be an art experimental film. It's going to be an anthology film, uh, which people will hopefully want to watch. Uh, so I'm trying to make it proper film length, okay? Uh, so I'm thinking about 90 minutes, but maybe a bit shorter than that. But if it's like 80, that's still film length, okay? But that's the sort of length I want it to be. Although a lot of this comes down to how the links work out and how long they are. Because I haven't been too precise about writing the links out. I know you think as an author, as a professional author, and write all the links out as a script. But what I don't want to do is to make it too in, uh, in stone, okay? Because I think the links have got to be organic to an extent. And so I'll probably fill in them a lot of times uh, with the ideas. Um, what I'm going to do, and I'll put a bit of, sorry about this, I've got a cold at the moment. So that's what I'm really going to be doing there. But there's also other aspects to it as well. Uh, and that is the anthology format. One thing I have thought about is possibly breaking out from that to a degree. Because as it is normally with an anthology film, you'll have something to start, and then you'll have a story, a film, and then you'll break back to, like, say I am here. And then you have another story. And what I actually thought was, what would be interesting is to break back sometimes mid-story. So you've got me talking about it and then you go back. Which technically then, it's not necessarily an anthology film. But I do think it'll work quite interesting. It'll help me to change the texture and the flow a little bit. Uh, where the film will be filmed will probably be here. Okay, Maybe not right here. But it'll probably be here. I'll probably be, the camera will be further back and stuff like that. Uh, but this is where it will probably be because 
you know, the film has to be filmed in a normal house. You know, it's just supposed to be some guy's place, which makes it ideal because this is some guy's place, it's my place, so it makes it much easier. Uh, but I did think about how I drink out of that format or not, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll probably film two versions of some of the things uh, and then see which one I go with. Because all I've really got to do is to edit bits out and edit bits in and see how that works out. But I think that may be possibly the way to go. Uh, sorry, brother. Sorry, bang your teeth. You can tell this bit is not scripted. I'm just keep talking about it anyway. But so far, things seem to be going well. And of course, I've still got a lot of the pictures to do. And the pictures will be. Will come from the stories, okay? Because a lot of it's going to be pictures of different types that match the stories. So it'll be quite a fast turnover of pictures, though, okay? Don't just think like one picture and that take it and it stays for a while, it'll be changing and organic. And that's part of the reason to switch back and forwards because I think that may be a good way to tell the story because they're not all the stories. Because in actual fact, a lot of this is going to be down the words and the quality of the story themselves, okay? This isn't going to be a case where special effects, uh, where I'll try to use that to get myself out of problems. It's not going to be able to work. I'm not going to be able to get myself out of a problem using special effects because there isn't any. So it's not going to be a case of, you know, we'll have a dazzling explosion. It's not going to work like that. Uh, the stories are paramount and the interest, uh, the stories, uh, you know, uh, provide the people with how interesting they are to other people. You know, and that's an important thing as well. But I suppose another thing which uh, is also an important point is that you know I want this film to provide something for your market for people who will watch it. You know, I like anthology films, but hopefully other people will as well. But you know, it's good if people watch this video, but also you really need to watch the film when it comes out. Because the only way people are going to start making anthology films, or the only way I'm going to be able to keep making them, is if people watch them. You know, if people don't watch them, it's going to be it's going to be difficult. It's probably not going to happen unless people watch them. But I think the advantage I've got, obviously, is as a uh, as a professional author, I am a good writer, and that makes it much easier because I'm not in the situation where because you do see some films and you realise the problem is the script. You know, and if you've got a script problem, then you really do have a problem because you can't, it's difficult to fix, you can't fix that. You know, especially not if it's timed out for a certain amount each scene. Uh, so it won't have that problem, it'll have a really good script, yeah. Uh, and I'll be the person who will be starring in it. The advantage with that, in there isn't really any costs then, there's just me. Uh, and also, hopefully, the film will. Uh, make people want to buy some more of my books or things like this. It'll work as a promotion as well. But like I said, there's a lot of different elements to this. And there's also the element of the audio, okay? There may not just be voice, like there's not going to be sounds and other things in the background. But you see, the thing is, I've got to be careful there as well. Because it's a film, there can't be anything with any copyright or royalties to it. So that's another element there that has to be added. It's not just me talking. Anything else added has to be owned by me or else uh, completely royalty and copyright free. Because otherwise it can't be used. And it'll cause all sorts of problems then. So, you know, I'll, I'll be very careful about that. It does mean that it's quite possible that some of the audio thing, any sounds, could be actually uh, played or uh, written by me. Okay. Although I'll probably try to keep. Uh, you know, that to appropriate things that fit in. But, you know, I'm not necessarily thinking about music. I think it would be good to have maybe some music for the beginning, but how practical that is, you know, uh, be another thing. But possibly ambient noise and things like this, because uh, real ambient noise, unfortunately, is, is quite messy. It's noisy, which is why you normally remove it if you can uh, because real ambient noise tends to just blur in with the voice and you can't hear it properly. So what you have to do is you have to sort of film your own voice and then you add stuff afterwards, you know. 
so you get that clear sound that you don't actually get in everyday life. Because if you made uh, a film and it sounded like everyday life, I don't think people would like it. It's got to sound better than everyday life, okay? You know, even if you're trying to portray something very realistic, it's got to be better than everyday life. Uh, but the film Horror Meal, that's what it'll be called, uh, we're a little bit closer to making it now, okay? A little bit closer to production. Uh, but like I said, there's still a lot of decisions to be made on this. Something, creative decisions to be made. But all the stories are written. And that means that in the framework state, so that means the basis of the film is now done. Okay? That basis is done now. The, the script is there. All the other stuff, uh, you know, it's just a matter of working with that script and working around that. It's just a matter of moving through to the next level. Okay? Really, the next level now is more about production. You know, or pre-production, getting the things I need to produce it, like pictures or this or... Uh, and then after that maybe video and working through it like that. So to recap, uh, all the stories are being written, they're all being produced. Uh, the framing ideas are all being sorted out and they can be filmed. So it's very much ready to go down to the next stage. Uh, and that would be like exclusively sound and, and also like I said it's going to be like exclusively for the writers. So Horror Meal is now moving ahead, moving ahead to the next stage.